The fuel system is designed to provide fuel to both engines and the APU. The fuel system consists of three subsystems. The storage subsystem, which includes vented integral fuel tanks in the aircraft wings. The distribution subsystem, which permits operations like engine feeding, APU feeding, tank refueling and defueling. And finally, the fuel indicating subsystem, which provides indications and failure information to the crew and maintenance personnel. The aircraft has two structurally integral wing tanks between the center wing rib and rib number 20. There is a dry bay area near the engine pylon designed to avoid a fuel tank rupture in case of an uncontained engine rotor burst. An expansion space of 2% of the full tank capacity is provided. Each wing contains a surge tank to collect fuel during wing down or uncoordinated maneuvers and a collector bay to ensure continuous fuel feed to the engine throughout the whole flight envelope. The arrangement of the tanks permits the fuel to flow from the outer tank area to the wing route and into the collector bay. Each tank contains the following equipment. Baffle and flapper check valves to allow fuel towards the collector bay. Three ejector pumps to assure maximum fuel availability in the collector bay. An ejector pump to feed the engine. An electrical AC fuel pump for engine starting and backup for the ejector pump. A check valve in the fuel feed line. Two drain valves for water drain and fuel inspection. And a gravity fill cap. There is a DC motor driven fuel pump inside the right hand tank. Access to the wing tanks and surge tank is possible through 12 manholes underneath the aircraft wing. A vent system is incorporated in each tank, along with the necessary parts for automatic and manual refueling and defueling. The tank vent system is designed to keep the pressure differential between the tank and ambient within structural limits under all operating conditions, and to prevent fuel spillage. The vent system incorporates the surge tank, which is connected to ambient via the flame arrester and surge relief valves, and a NACA air inlet. The system also includes a wing main vent line with a float actuated drain valve and an outboard vent line with float vent valve. In addition, a secondary or wing stub vent line with a float actuated drain valve is fitted to each tank. As a safety against overpressure, you will find a pressure relief valve mounted into each wing tank. The inboard part of the fuel tank is vented by the main vent line into the surge tank. Fuel which collects in the vent line can drain back into the tank when the fuel level decreases. The float actuated drain valves will open. Air from the outer tank can drain through the outboard vent line into the surge tank. If the fuel level rises during aircraft maneuvers, the float vent valve will close and prevent fuel from leaking into the surge tank. A secondary vent line vents all residual air out of the wing stub to the main wing. Fuel that has leaked into the surge tank can flow back into the fuel tank through a check valve when the fuel level inside the tank has decreased below the check valve. 
Through the NACA air inlet, airflow into and out of the tank is guaranteed. The inlet provides slight ram pressure in the tank during flight and is fitted with a flame arrestor. If the arrestor becomes blocked, it can be bypassed via inward and outward pressure relief valves. A high-capacity poppet-type hydromechanical pressure relief valve will open automatically if the pressure inside the tank exceeds 3.0 PSIG. Due to gravity, water inside the fuel tanks will collect at two locations in each wing. Two drain valves drain the water of the wing tank and of the collector bay. One drain valve is located next to the AC auxiliary fuel pump and the other is located close to the wing stub to wing junction. The aircraft fuel distribution system has three subsystems. Engine feed, APU feed, and refuel defuel. The engine feed system ensures a continuous supply of pressurized fuel to the engine during aircraft operation by using ejector and electrical pumps. It also has a crossfeed feature that allows fuel supply to both engines from either one of the wing fuel tanks. The APU fuel feed system ensures a continuous supply of pressurized fuel to the APU using a tap from the right-hand side engine supply line. The refuel defuel system allows fuel to be moved into and out of the main wing tanks using a single point pressure refueling station or two overwing gravity refuel ports. The fuel feed system has one main engine feed ejector pump and one AC electrical pump for each wing. Each of these pumps can provide more than enough fuel to feed one engine plus the APU during takeoff and go around. The pumps are installed in the main wing tanks collector bay. The primary fuel pump is an ejector pump, operated from motive flow supplied by the engine-driven fuel pump. The ejector pump is a venturi with no moving parts that draws fuel from the collector bay when fed with high-pressure motive flow. The inlet port is equipped with a strainer to avoid ingestion of foreign objects. A pressure switch is installed immediately upstream of the engine-mounted low-pressure fuel pump to monitor engine inlet feed pressure. This pressure switch provides inputs to MAU number 3. In the event of failure of the main engine feed ejector pump, the AC auxiliary boost pump provides backup fuel flow to the engine. The fuel-cooled centrifugal pump uses a dual-pole motor to operate on a 400 Hz three-phase power supply. In case of overheat, a thermal fuse will disconnect the pump. The inlet is equipped with an 8-mesh wire screen strainer to avoid ingestion of foreign objects. The pump is a cartridge and canister type design that allows removal of the pumping element without entering or draining the tank. AC Bus 1 powers the left AC auxiliary pump and AC Essential Bus powers the right-hand AC auxiliary pump. In case of an electrical emergency, the right-hand AC auxiliary pump will be supplied from the ram air turbine. A DC-powered electrical centrifugal pump located in the right-hand collector tank provides a source of pressurized fuel supply for APU and engine start in flight. Or on the ground, if the engine feed ejector pump and AC power or the AC auxiliary pump are not available. The inlet is equipped with a strainer to avoid ingestion of foreign objects. The motor housing incorporates a resettable thermal protector to ensure hazardous temperatures are not exceeded. The pump is a cartridge and canister type that allows removal of the pumping element without entering or draining the tank. Electrical power will be supplied from the essential DC bus to a three-position rotary switch on the cockpit fuel control panel controls each of the electrical pumps. 
With the switch set to off, the corresponding pump will not be powered. When the switch is placed in the auto position, the SPDA determines when the pump should be powered. When the switch is placed in the on position, the corresponding pump will be powered continuously. When the AC auxiliary pump switches are in the auto position, which is the normal position, the detection of an ejector pump failure, sensed by the engine inlet low pressure switch, will result in automatic start of the AC auxiliary pump. When the DC start pump switch is in the auto position, the detection of an AC auxiliary pump failure will result in automatic start of the DC start pump. Pressure switches, one for each pump, monitor the output of the electrical pumps. MAU number one monitors the status of the AC pump one pressure switch and MAU number 3 monitors the status of the AC pump 2 and the DC start pump pressure switches. Each MAU transmits the data on the ASCB for ICUS display and control functions. The ICUS messages fuel AC 1 2 pump fail or fuel DC pump fail indicate that the respective pump is not operating properly. A 28-volt DC motor-operated ball valve is installed in each engine feed line to prevent hazardous quantities of fuel from flowing into designated fire zones. The valves, one for each of the two engine feed lines, are mounted on the rear spar of the wing with the hydromechanical portion of the valve inside and the electrical actuator outside of the tank. MAU-1 monitors the status of the left engine feed shutoff valve, while MAU-3 receives position feedback from the right valve. The position of the valves is displayed on the ICUS. The two valves can be operated by the crew by means of the two fire handles mounted on the overhead panel in the cockpit. When pulled, the respective shutoff valve will close. The message, Engine 1, Fuel SOV Closed, will be displayed on the ICUS. If the valve fails or the handle position does not correspond to the actual valve position, the caution, engine 1 fuel SOV fail or engine 2 fuel SOV fail will be displayed on the ICUS. Check valves are located in the low pressure engine feed delivery line on the discharge of each pump. Check valves are also installed in the high pressure motive flow line to prevent excessive fuel loss if the line between the airframe and engine is opened due to failure or maintenance activity. The engine feed check valve is a simple inline swing check valve. The fittings on each end are different to prevent reverse installation. Scavenge ejector pumps are installed to maintain fuel supply to the collector bays during normal aircraft maneuvers. The forward scavenge ejector pump is mounted in the forward inboard corner of the wing stub, forward of the collector bay dam. The outboard scavenge ejector pump is mounted at the lowest point of the wing outboard of rib number one. The aft scavenge ejector pump is mounted just inboard of rib number one. The scavenge ejector pumps also derive their motive flow from the engine driven fuel pump. Engine start with the APU in operation. The AC pump is used to supply initial fuel flow to the engine. The AC pump switch in the cockpit has to be in the auto position. The main ejector pump will then supply fuel during normal operation. In case the engine inlet pressure switch senses a low fuel pressure and the AC pump switch is in auto, the AC pump will automatically start up and take over the supply of fuel to the engine. If the APU is inoperative and no AC ground power is available, the DC pump will be used for initial fuel supply. As in the case of a main ejector pump and AC pump failure, the DC pump will supply fuel. The crossfeed function allows both engines to be fed from a single fuel tank.
This feature permits correction of minor lateral fuel imbalances by temporarily feeding both engines from one wing tank. If one engine is shut down, the crossfeed function will be used to prevent lateral imbalance. The crossfeed subsystem consists of a motor operated shutoff valve in a line connecting the right and left hand engine feed lines. The crossfeed shutoff valve remains closed during normal operation. 28 volt DC power is supplied to the crossfeed shutoff valve via the solid state power controllers in SPDA2 from DC Essential Bus 2. Lateral fuel imbalances exceeding 360 kilograms, 792 pounds, are enunciated on the ICUS by the message fuel imbalance. This message will disappear when the difference is reduced to 45 kilograms, 99 pounds. A three position rotary switch located on the cockpit control panel controls the crossfeed valve and associated AC auxiliary pump. If the AC pump controls are in the auto position, if an AC auxiliary pump switch is in the off or on position, this command will override the crossfeed command. When the crossfeed switch is in the low 1 or low 2 position, SPDA2 commands the crossfeed shutoff valve open. When the crossfeed switch is in the off position, SPDA2 commands the crossfeed shutoff valve closed. When the crossfeed switch is placed in the low 1 position, indicating the fuel quantity in the left tank is lower than the right tank, the right AC auxiliary pump will be powered to feed fuel from the right tank. When crossfeed is placed in the low 2 position, the left AC auxiliary pump will be powered. MAU number 3 monitors the status of the valve. The ICUS message, fuel crossfeed shutoff valve open, indicates the crossfeed valve is open and associated AC auxiliary pump is operating. The caution message, fuel crossfeed fail, indicates that the crossfeed shutoff valve and or associated AC auxiliary pump have not operated according to the selection of the associated switch. The fuel feed system is shown in normal position. You can now crossfeed either the left hand or right hand engine by selecting the crossfeed switch to low 1 or low 2. The APU feed system is made up of a DC electric motor driven pump mounted in the right hand fuel tank. A DC motor operated APU feed shutoff valve to isolate the APU from the fuel system after shutdown and the flexible APU feed line. In addition, the APU makes use of the engine feed system whenever the AC pump or main ejector pump is in operation. The 28 volt DC centrifugal pump mounted in the right hand side fuel tank collector bay provides one source of pressurized fuel for APU start. This pump can be operated by battery power. The APU is fed from the right hand engine feed line when pressure in that line is available. An APU feed shutoff valve is mounted aft of the fuel tank on the APU feed line to isolate the APU from the fuel system after APU shutdown or when commanded from the cockpit. The DC motor operated valve is mounted outside of the fuel tank on the rear spar of the wing stub. It incorporates a manual override and a position indicating lever. 28 volt DC power is supplied to the valve via the solid state power controllers in SPDA2 from Essential DC Bus 2. The shutoff valve is controlled by the overhead APU control panel in the cockpit. The shutoff valve is commanded closed when the APU master switch is selected to off. It will be commanded to open when the APU master switch is selected to the on position. The APU emergency stop and APU fire extinguisher switches override the valve commands from the APU master switch. If either of these push buttons is pressed, the shutoff valve is commanded closed. 
If a fire is detected in the APU compartment and the aircraft is on the ground, following a 10-second delay, the APU will shut down automatically if there is no crew intervention. The APU feed shutoff valve will be closed and the right-hand AC auxiliary pump and DC start pump will be depowered. Note that the electric pump will continue to operate if required for right-hand engine operation. Indication switches in the APU shutoff valve provide feedback regarding valve position. MAU number 3 monitors the status of the switches and transmits the data on the ASCB for ICUS display. The ICUS caution message, APU shutoff valve fail, indicates the APU shutoff valve is not operating properly. The ICUS message, APU shutoff valve closed, will be displayed for 10 seconds following normal closure to confirm valve position. After 10 seconds, the message APU shutoff valve closed will no longer be displayed. If either the APU emergency stop or the APU fire extinguisher switch is used to close the valve, the message APU shutoff valve closed will continue to be displayed. For APU start, the DC and AC pump switches have to be in auto position. If you select APU start, the DC pump will start to supply pressurized fuel. As soon as AC power is available, the AC pump will take over. When the engine is running and the engine feed system is operating, fuel will be supplied from the ejector pump to the engine and the APU. If necessary, the APU can be supplied with fuel from the left-hand tank. By moving the cross-feed switch to low 2 and with AC power available, the left AC pump will supply pressurized fuel to the APU. If the left engine is operating, the left ejector pump will also supply the fuel to the APU. The aircraft can be refueled by gravity through the two overwing gravity fill ports. Standard refueling and defueling will be performed by use of the single point pressure refueling defueling adapter. The adapter, along with the refuel control panel, is installed behind an access door on the right hand leading edge. The pressure refueling system consists of the single point refueling adapter, a refuel defuel control panel, a refuel shutoff valve, and a high level float pilot valve in each wing tank refuel line. To control the refueling, a refuel control solenoid and a refuel pressure switch are installed on either side. Grounding points are provided so that the aircraft and the fueling truck can be properly grounded during refueling and defueling. The single point pressure refuel adapter is installed on the right hand wing leading edge. The adapter flange mates with standard refueling nozzles. A spring loaded poppet valve is installed inside the adapter. The poppet valve opens when the refuel nozzle control lever is moved to the open position with the nozzle inserted into the adapter. Following refuel completion, the poppet valve is reseated by moving the nozzle control lever to the closed position. This allows the nozzle to be inserted and removed with minimal fuel spillage. The adapter incorporates a cap to prevent the escape of hazardous quantities of fuel from the system if the poppet valve fails. The refuel shutoff valve is a hydromechanical device that operates from the pressure differential applied to an internal poppet assembly. The high level float pilot valve controls the refuel shutoff valve by a pilot line connected between the shutoff valve and the pilot valve. When the pilot port is open and pressure is applied to the valve inlet, Higher pressure on the upstream side of the poppet causes the valve to open. When the pilot port is closed, fuel pressure applied to the inlet will equalize on both sides of the poppet.
the piston chamber on the downstream side of the poppet has a larger surface area than the area on the inlet side. That causes the closing force to exceed the opening force. A spring acting on the poppet adds to the hydraulic force to close the valve. The pilot valve consists of a float, pilot port, and control port. The float can be lifted by fuel level rise or by the application of pressure to the control port. When the float is up, the pilot port is closed, which allows pressure buildup in the pilot line connected to the refuel shutoff valve. The refuel control solenoid is installed outside of the fuel tank on the rear spar to eliminate the potential for an ignition source inside the tank. The single coil, normally closed solenoid is installed in a pilot line between the main refuel line and the high level float pilot valve. Fuel from the main refuel line is allowed to flow through the pilot line when 28 volt DC is applied to the solenoid. A refuel pressure switch is installed in the pilot line between the pilot valve and refuel shutoff valve. When the float is up and pressure is applied to the refuel system, high pressure will be indicated by the pressure switch, closing the electrical circuit to illuminate the closed indication light on the refuel defuel control panel. The refuel defuel control panel provides control and monitoring facilities for refuel and defuel shutoff valves, as well as power selection. When the access panel door is open, the compartment will be illuminated automatically, and on the ICUS, a fueling door open message will illuminate. If the aircraft is not electrically powered, the system can be connected to the hot bus too by selecting the power selection switch to battery. Refueling can now be performed either manually, bypassing the fuel conditioning unit, or automatically. The refueling valves can be controlled by the refueling switch and monitored via the two refuel shutoff valve closed lights. The refuel defuel indicator has a two line eight character display which displays the fuel quantity on the upper display and the pre selected quantity on the lower display during automatic refuel. The indicator includes two three position toggle switches. When in the increase position, the pre select quantity shown on the indicator lower line will increase. Likewise, when in the decrease position, the pre select quantity will decrease. The top line of the indicator normally displays the current total fuel quantity in both tanks. When moved to the tank select position, the display will alternate from total tank quantity to left quantity to right quantity. Moving this switch to the test position will initiate self-test of the fuel quantity indicating subsystem. In case of a failure, fail will be indicated. More information is then available in the CMC. For pressure refueling, please select a quantity higher than the actual fuel quantity. After pressurizing the refuel line, an automatic pre-check is performed and indicated by the two closed lights illuminated on the refuel panel. This verifies proper function of the shutoff system. Now you can move the refueling switch to open. And refuel will start. The fuel control unit will energize the refuel control solenoid and lift the pilot float valve to stop refueling when the actual fuel quantity has reached the pre-selected value. 
It is possible to override the FCU by selecting Manual on the refuel panel. Then the refuel valves can be controlled manually with the refueling switch. Defueling of the aircraft tanks can be performed by suction or pressure defueling, or by using both at the same time via the single pressure refuel adapter. The system includes the following components the refuel defuel panel to control defueling, and a defuel shutoff valve to open or close the defuel line. To defuel the tanks, the crossfeed valve will also be used. For pressure defueling, the electrically driven pumps can be used and may also be used to assist suction defueling. Note that AC power is required to perform defueling. The defuel valve is a 28 volt DC motor operated ball valve installed in an interconnecting line between the refuel and crossfeed lines. The valve incorporates a manual override and a position indicating lever that can be wire locked in the closed position in the event of failure. Electrical power is supplied to the defuel shutoff valve via the solid state power controllers in SPDA2. Whenever the valve is open, it will be indicated by a defuel valve open light on the refuel defuel panel. If the aircraft is on the ground, a defuel valve open advisory message will appear on the ICUS. To perform suction defueling, the defuel shutoff valve located between the engine feed manifold and the refuel line is opened to provide a flow path between the collector bay and the adapter. Suction is applied at the single point refuel adapter by ground equipment and fuel is drawn through the main engine feed ejector pumps when the required fuel level inside the tank is reached. Defueling can be stopped by closing the defuel valve with the switch on the refuel defuel panel. To perform pressure defueling, the electric pumps have to be selected on and the defuel shutoff valve has to be opened to provide pressurized fuel at the adapter. To defuel both tanks, the crossfeed valve also has to be opened in this condition. Suction by ground equipment can be applied to assist in the defuel process. Note, do not operate the electrical pumps, especially the DC pump, dry. Fuel can be transferred from wing to wing for maintenance purposes only on ground and with AC power available. To transfer fuel from the right hand tank to the left hand tank, the refuel one circuit breaker has to be pulled. This will de energize the left refueling control system and allow the fuel pressure to open the left refuel shutoff valve. Open the defuel valve on the refuel defuel panel. Then select the AC Pump 2 switch to Auto and the Crossfeed switch to Low 1. Fuel will now be transferred to the left tank. When the desired fuel transfer is finished, move the respective switches to Off or Closed and reset the circuit breaker. To transfer fuel from the left hand tank to the right hand tank, the Crossfeed valve also has to be used. Now, Refuel 2 circuit breaker has to be pulled to de energize the right hand refueling system. Select the defueling switch to open on the refuel defuel panel. Select the AC pump 1 to auto and move the crossfeed switch to low 2. When the desired fuel transfer is finished, move the respective switches to off or closed and reset the circuit breaker. The fuel system indication system consists of the following elements electrical fuel quantity and mechanical fuel quantity, fuel temperature and fuel low level indication. The primary means of determining fuel quantity is an AC capacitance type electrical fuel indicating subsystem. If the electrical fuel indicating system should fail, 
a backup mechanical quantity indicating subsystem, which operates by means of magnetic level indicators, allows the aircraft to be dispatched. The fuel system can be monitored by a synoptic page on the cockpit displays. The electrical indication system provides a highly accurate measurement of fuel mass in the wings, of fuel temperature, and fuel low level. The system includes the following components. The fuel conditioning unit in the center electrical bay. And the refuel defuel indicator on the fueling panel. Each wing has 13 tank units, one compensator, and one fuel low level sensor. A temperature sensor is installed in the left hand tank only. Fuel system operation status can be monitored on the ICUS and the fuel system synoptic page on the MFD. The tank units or probes are AC capacitance type sensors that provide a direct capacitance versus height relationship. The tank units require an excitation from the FCU, which measures the capacitance to determine fuel quantity. Each tank unit is mounted inside the wing tank by means of two rib mounted brackets. No calibration is necessary after installation of a new tank unit. Tank unit number one is a dual function unit with a coaxially mounted compensator. The compensator measures the dielectric of the fuel, which is required to compute fuel height and fuel density, which is required to calculate fuel mass. The fuel low level sensor is independent of the tank units. Each fuel quantity processor of the FCU measures the low level sensor from the opposite fuel tank, ensuring complete independence from the fuel gauging. The warning signals are then sent to the MAU. When the fuel level in the wing reaches 300 kilograms, a fuel one or two low level warning message appears on the ICUS. The fuel conditioning unit is built of two identical but independent fuel quantity processors. One for the right and one for the left wing quantity. Each processor computes the fuel quantity of its associated fuel tank and transmits it to the ICUS on its own IRINC 429 interface. Each processor receives fuel quantity data from the other via a serial data link internal to the FCU. Via strapping, the FCU is forced to send the information either in kilograms or pounds. Each processor within the FCU also monitors the status of the low-level sensor mounted in the opposite fuel tank. Only the right-hand processor of the FCU interfaces with the repeater indicator via a serial data link. During automatic refueling, the FCU controls the left and right refueling valves. When the power selection switch on the refuel defuel panel is selected to battery, the FCU is connected to the battery. In all other cases, it is powered by the essential DC bus 1 and 2. If the FCU detects a failure, it sends the failure information to the ICUS and to the CMC. If the fuel quantity cannot be accurately calculated, the indications are replaced by amber dashes. If this happens during automatic refueling, the refuel valves close. In the left tank only, a fuel temperature sensor is installed. If the temperature in the left tank drops to minus 40 degrees Celsius, or less. A fuel tank low temp caution appears on the ICUS. The fuel temperature can be monitored on the fuel system synoptic page. The left and right fuel quantities can be monitored on the ICUS. The fuel system synoptic page can be selected on the MFD 
by selecting Systems and then Fuel. Total fuel quantity and fuel used are displayed as digital values. In addition to digital values, the left and right tank quantities are shown on an analog scale. The indication is displayed in 10 kilogram increments. The fuel temperature in the left hand tank is displayed in green as long as the temperature is above minus 40 degrees Celsius. Below that, it appears in amber. The status of the main ejector and electrical pumps is indicated in white as long as they are in standby. Turn green when in operation and amber if there is a fault. The mechanical fuel indicating system is a completely independent system used to provide an auxiliary visual display of the fuel quantity by means of three magnetic level indicators or dipsticks per wing. The magnetic level indicators are mounted into fuel tank access panels underneath the wing. To perform an accurate reading using the magnetic level indicators, the aircraft should be in a level position. When rotating and lowering the indicator, the rod magnet will be kept by the float magnet, and the height of the fuel level is displayed on the stick. The weight of the fuel on board can then be determined by referring to the chart in the operations manual. 